a pum anna, sliced potatoes baked in butter in the form of a cake. And here are pomme duchesse, a beautiful border of mashed potatoes surrounding a great steak. We're doing more about potatoes today on The French Chef. <laughs> The French Chef is made possible by a grant from Hills Brothers Coffee Incorporated and a grant from the Polaroid Corporation. Welcome to the French Chef. I'm Julia Child. We're doing two kinds of potatoes today, two famous recipes. One is with sliced potatoes, and it's called pomme anna, and the other one is with mashed potatoes, and that's called pomme duchesse. It's the kind you squeeze out of a pastry tube and make beautiful designs and borders with. And I've got here six cups of plain mashed potatoes. And this is what we're going to make the pomme duchesse with. And if you are going to make them from scratch with, with your own potatoes, um, be sure that you use boiling potatoes because you want a nice floury, soft, fluffy potato. And but you can make them with instant potatoes. And if you do, you want them to be dry and thick. So follow the package directions. But just add water and salt and go a little bit light on the water, because you can always add a little more boiling water. But the main thing is that you want a thick mass of potatoes. And then you're ready to turn them into pomme duchesse. And if you're cooking your regular potatoes, We've, we've done mashed potatoes before, so I don't have to tell you how to, uh, how to mash them. You just cook them till they're tender in salted water. I think maybe I said to use boiling potatoes, I mean use baking potatoes, because boiling potatoes don't end up nice and fluffy the way uh, baking potatoes do. And then all that pomme duchesse are, or is, is, uh, mashed potatoes with eggs and butter and cream in it, egg yolks. And for each two cups of mashed potatoes, you want three egg yolks. And we have six, so I have nine egg yolks here. I want to make have lots of it so that we'll be able to do anything we want with them. And the potatoes are warm, be sure of that. And then you just beat your egg yolks right in. And that makes a nice yellow mass. Then you're going to have butter and cream that go in too. But the important thing in making this this pomme duchesse border, I mean these pomme duchesse, is that you have to have the potatoes so that they will hold together well, so that you go a little bit easy on what you add to them. And we have, and for every two cups of mashed potatoes, you add uh, three tablespoons of butter, and we've got six cups, so we'll, we'll add one stick of softened butter, and that gets all stirred in. You could stir this all in in a, uh, in a mixer if you want it, but it's good for your muscles to stir it by hand. And then you want to add a little bit of cream. It's usually about two tablespoons for each two cups of butter. So we won't add more than a third of a cup, but you add it a little bit at a time and keep stirring it up because you want it to keep its shape, because after you form it into, into your shapes, you're then going to bake it. And if you have too much, and if, if it's too liquid, it's going to collapse. So see, this is just about right, and it holds in the spoon, you see. You might be able to add a little bit more cream, but I think I'm not going to, because I want it to hold up. So that is about two tablespoons of cream for each two cups of potatoes. And then you want to be sure and season it very carefully. With all this potato, I'm going to have to have a lot of, quite a bit of pepper in, and then a little bit more salt, probably. And then you want just a little bit of, of nutmeg. I would like to use a grater. Grate it in. 
would be not too much nutmeg because you don't want to be able to taste the nutmeg. You just know something is there. And then those potatoes are still warm and then you're ready to form them into pomme duchesse border. And for that, the easiest thing to use is a pastry bag. I was at a big department store the other day and I was happy to see they had plenty of pastry bags. And this is just a canvas bag. They come in all sizes. This one's 14 inches long. And you see it has a nozzle with big teeth in it. And there's a nozzle with little teeth. But I think for the pomme duchesse, you want big teeth on the nozzle. And then you fill the bag. And I think it's easiest to fill the bag setting it into a quart measure. Then just put these warm potatoes in. It's easy to, easy to put them in if you have a great big, great big spatula. I always like these bigger bags better. I'll, I just like everything bigger because it seems to be easier to handle. And now I'm putting the pan in hot water because um, if we want to use the potatoes more, they have to be warm because if they will, um, you can't squeeze them out, the, out of the bag otherwise. And now we're going to make a border of Duchess potatoes. So we have a big platter and that you want to butter. And I've got melted butter. You usually always butter a platter before you put any food on it because it just makes the, makes the food come off easier and the pan's easier to clean. And now, holding your bag, you see you've got one hand underneath and then your other hand, your right hand if you're right-handed, is gripping the top with your thumb and forefinger. And then you have your hand around the bag and you twist it with this hand, twisting the bag up until you see the potatoes coming out the end. Then you start making your border. Roll, round, 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 round. This is a long border, so you have to rather catch up where you are. Now I want to show you that movement just on a board. Now see, remember this grip that I'm holding gripping it up at the top and it keeps and keep twisting it around and I have a double press with my lower hand and my upper hand. And so you start pushing it out and then you just move your whole hand around to make any kind of a shape you want. And you can make you can make little things like that and cook them separately. Or something like that. So I'm now gonna make the do the other side. Then you want to make some rosettes. I think I'll have to put a little more, a little more potato in my bag here if I want to have some nice fat rosettes. These are such fun to do because you can make all kinds of designs. Now I'll make a big, a big rosette at the end and one at the other end. So I'm leaving a place in the middle because we're going. Then you can put a big stake in, and there's another one on that side. Sometimes you get so fascinated making these things that you don't leave any room for your stake. Well, I'll put a little another one there, another one there. This is just pushing out and lifting up. There. Now that's all ready to bake, and it will be. It will be. Uh, it's going to be browned in the oven, but you have to have something to help it brown. Some people like egg yolk, but I just don't like to paint this with egg yolk. I'd much rather use grated Swiss cheese, just finely grated and sprinkle a little bit all over the top. I think the egg yolk glaze leaves sort of a skin on top of the potatoes, and I think they should be as delicious as possible to taste. And then take a little bit of melted butter and just sprinkle it all all around on the top and that's going to help them to brown. You know this you can prepare ahead of time but if you uh, once you bake it you should serve it fair, 
quite quickly or else keep it warm. You can keep it warm for about half an hour. And when you, you can just set it aside all ready to go. And then when you're ready to bake it, put it into a 400 degree oven in the upper third. And in, it'll be nicely browned in about 30 minutes. And then this is what it looks like. It already has a steak on it. And that's how it looks when it is all brown. But just remember that you, uh, that once baked, you should really use it again. All, you should really use it almost immediately. Now, if by chance you don't have a pastry bag, you can put the potatoes on with a spoon. It's not nearly as nice. And I think if you're going to, you really, if you're serious about cooking, you should get yourself a pastry bag, particularly it's so much more fun. But you can arrange things, make a border with a spoon. Say this is just a partial border there, and then make some little, take a fork and make little marks all down, and then twist the fork in the top. Doesn't really look very well. I think, I think if you're going to do pomme duchesse, you really should have the pastry bag. And so we're now, the, you can do all kinds of other things, of course, with the, with the pomme duchesse, whatever imagination you have is for shapes. And it's great fun to do, and it certainly is very easy, as you see. Now, the next, the next uh, recipe we have is pom anna, that's sliced potatoes, which are cooked in the form of a cake. And you want to do, when you're going to do the pom anna, it's quite, it's quite a beautiful dish when it's properly done. Be sure that you have cut your slices all about the same diameter, about an inch and a quarter thick, about an inch and a quarter in diameter, and that they should be thin uh, uh, between a sixteenth and an eighth of an inch. And I want to show you how you make sure that they're of uniform diameter. Take your peeled potato and even it off into a cylinder with a knife. And try and make it just as even all around as you can and then cut the ends off. So you see you have just a plain cylinder and you can save all of your scraps and make a nice soup out of it. And then just cut it. If you've done your knife practice, you can do this very quickly, like that. That one was too thick. I'll throw it out. And then if you uh, slice your potatoes ahead of time, be sure that you put them in water and let them sit in water. Because if you don't let them sit in water, uh, they'll turn a dark color. And then when you're ready to use them, uh, drain them. And be sure that you use, for this, be sure that you use boiling potatoes, because you have to have potatoes that are going to keep their shape when they're cooking. So look for either boiling or all-purpose. And the second important thing about this recipe is that you have to dry them off very thoroughly. So take some nice, heavy towels. And for this recipe, where we want six cups of sliced potatoes, that's about two pounds. And this is the most, a very, very important step of the drying of them. So there they're in one layer of towel, and then put them in, then put another towel on top, and pat them all down. And then roll up the towel, and then you're ready to go. Now this, this dessert, uh, I mean, not dessert, I said dessert because it looks like a cake. But this recipe for potatoes is, is so famous in France that they have a special dish for them called a cocotte à pomme and à. And this is very heavy copper. And it has a bottom about two and a half inches high and these little ears on it. And then it has a top that comes right over and covers it. And the reason it's very heavy is because these potatoes are going to cook in butter in a very, very hot oven. And the object is that you brown them on the bottom and on the sides, and then the inside is lovely and soft. And you can't make this dish unless you have a very heavy pan. But you don't have to have this particular dish, this pom anna dish. You can have, say here, 
This is uh, one of these fire flame proof ceramics that gets that's thick and gets very hot and it has a handle that comes off which is very convenient indeed and then a cover that goes on but I want, wanted to show you that you could do them in anything that you'd have and almost everyone has one of these heavy skillets and I think the, the skillet works perfectly beautifully and I would suggest that you use that but you have to cook them in clarified butter. You see there's several points, drying the potatoes, heavy pan, and clarified butter. Now, if you notice this butter, you see there's a whole lot of white sediment that's down in the bottom here. This is just ordinary butter that was melted, and you always find this white sediment, and then there's the clear liquid on top, and the clear liquid is clarified butter. And if you don't clarify it for this kind of a recipe, this sediment, which is all beaten in through regular butter, burns and sticks, and that'll make your, uh, make your potato stick to the pan. Oh, here's my skillet right here. And the whole point of this is when you cook them, they don't stick to the pan. And now you set your skillet over moderately high heat and put in about two tablespoons of this clarified butter. And then you want it to heat up to good and hot. First, and you have your potatoes over here, which, are, which you have allowed to dry. It doesn't make any difference in this recipe whether you've washed your sliced potatoes or not, just as long as they're absolutely dry. And just so keep drying them and then your butter is just bubbling and then you start laying them in in layers and see the object is you lay them in the layers and then after the potatoes are baked you turn your pan upside down and then the bottom layer is the top so you start with your very dry slices of potatoes and you lay them in the pan along the edge slightly overlapping you want this bottom layer to be very attractive looking because that's what's, what you're going to see. I think I'd better get a fork here. I'm going to turn. You want your butter always to be definitely bubbling. And then start with another layer of potatoes and overlap them just going the other way. and you'll have to stick that in underneath with your fork. Then you have one potato on top. And then put in a little bit more butter. There's a lot of butter used in this recipe, but you'll find that, I mean, after they're cooked, you drain about two thirds of it out, so don't be horrified by the amount we're using. And then lay another layer in going this, this same way. You always hear a lot about clarified butter. And the main reason that you use it in a recipe like this is, is so that it's, you're not going to, it's that little, that white sediment down in the bottom, you're going to get rid of all of that. And you should just simply put the butter in a little saucepan and melt it over low heat until the, until the sediment sunk to the bottom and the liquid's at the top. Now at this point, take the handle of your pan and shake it around. You can see the potatoes are moving slightly and that's just what you want them to do because you've got to have the bottom part so that it doesn't stick. And then you want to put salt and pepper on. So here's my pepper. You don't put the salt and pepper on until you get to this second layer. just a little sprinkling of each. And then continue on, and with the next layers, except for the, except for around the edge, you don't have to be careful. Now there are uh, some recipes in which they take the slices of potato and they make an upright edge all the way around. I, mean, I used to do it that way, but I find that you're never quite sure that it's going to unmold. It does look a little fancier, but, uh, 
The main thing, I think, in a recipe like this is you want it to work and you don't have any trouble of it not working if you if you just make the edges like this. Now, I don't have to be so careful with that. That middle is just the edges. There's a great question as to why this recipe was called Pum Anna. And it appears that there were two Annas in Paris in that Belle Epoque of the 19th century. And in those days, nice married women didn't go out to restaurants. It was only those lovely, naughty actresses who were able to go to restaurants with various gentlemen, quite a few of them whom were married men, but they were very gay ladies, and so quite a few of the great recipes are named after some of these gay girls who were actresses. I'm going to put a little more salt and pepper on. And it appears that this, this Anna was either Anna de Lyon, an actress, or Anna Judique, another actress with a lovely voice. Now notice here I'm being very careful only on the edge, and the middle part is going in rather roughly, and I'm being extremely careful that the potatoes are dry all the time. Then you see the middle goes in fairly loosely. I'm not going to fill this whole pan. But remember that you keep on putting on a little bit of butter and that you keep your pan, keep your shaking your pan every once in a while to make sure that the bottom isn't, isn't uh, sticking. And then fill the pan up to a slight dome and remember that you salt and pepper each layer. And then you are ready, ready to bake them in the oven. Now this is another thing that you have to do. You want to press them down. See that this is in a very slight dome on top. Take a piece of aluminum foil and put it on the bottom of a heavy skillet. And then press down. And this is to press the potatoes together so that they will form into a cake. And then you want to cover them. They're going to go into the oven in a moment. And you want to take a cover and butter it. This is to make sure that the potatoes aren't going to stick to it. And then the potatoes go into a preheated 450 degree oven. And you want to watch if you have too much butter and the butter can bubble up over the potatoes and, and possibly burn in the oven. So watch that you don't have too much butter, but you want a lot. And then you cook them for 20 minutes at 450, and then you take them out of the oven and take your pressing pan, take the cover off, and press them down again very hard, and then cook them for 20 minutes more uncovered. Uh, I like to cook them uncovered for the last 20 minutes because I find that uh, if you don't, the potatoes get sort of a stuffed up taste. I, I, it's hard to explain, but I don't think they have as fresh a taste as if you don't, as if you uncover them for the last 20 minutes. And it is about 40 minutes in all. And there they are, done. And so, you're first going to drain the fat off, I mean drain the butter off. You find that a, a great deal comes out here. These did have a, a little more butter in, but it began bubbling over and I was afraid they were going to burn, so about halfway through I had to drain some out. Then you can keep your butter, because that's perfectly good to be used again and then you're ready to unmold them. And the unmolding is something, is something of a problem when you're using a frying pan like this, this over here. So I want to unmold them on a platter. And if I had, if I had something that didn't have an end on it, I could just unmold it, but because it has this handle on it, if I unmolded it that way, they might fall. So I un un unmold it in two stages. So take a uh, cookie sheet and butter it. Then, 
it's also a good idea to just take a little knife and go around the edge just to make sure that nothing is stuck and then you hope that they haven't stuck on the bottom. Now this is awfully hot, remember that. Now, we're hoping for the best. Oh, they stuck to the bottom. That often happens. But in this case, I can see that they are loose enough, so I think I'm going to be able to loosen that and put it on the top. I'm very glad this happened because it often does, so you don't need to get too upset over it. But I think I can arrange it so that it will never show. But these are those little things that happen in the kitchen that you have to be prepared for. But that has a very nice top, I must say. And now, oh, that pan is so hot, I, one forgets that a frying pan handle is hot. And then just slide that onto your serving dish. There. Now it's just as well that, that, isn't, that this isn't a perfect illustration because this will happen to you, but with a little parsley around, it will never show. And so now we're ready to see what we have in the dining room to serve with these. There. I just, I must say, I love potatoes, and I think this potatoes, Anna, is a wonderful dish. Now take a big, be sure that you take a knife and cut down through, because otherwise you will mash the crust rather than, rather than cutting through it. And this, for this amount, with this skillet, this was about a six inch skillet, this will serve six people, and it's perfectly lovely served with chicken. And we have our, there are pomme de chasse surrounding a great big steak. And it's both edible and beautiful. And you know, there are over 200 French recipes for potatoes. That seems like an awful lot. Some are very simple and then other ones are elegant like this pomme de chasse and the pomme anna. That just shows what a versatile animal the potato is. Now, we, on this show, we've done 11 potato recipes up to now, and we have 189 more to do. That's all for today on The French Chef. This is Julia Child. Bon appétit. The French Chef has been made possible by a grant from the Polaroid Corporation and a grant from Hills Brothers Coffee, Incorporated. <laughs>